Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to this fight kiln guide. In this guide I'm going to show you how to complete the fight kiln. And this guide is going to be after the buffs that Jagex made to the fight kiln back in June. So this guide is a fully up to date one. But before we get into strategies and stuff, I'm going to show you a few useful items that will help you. The first is this obsidian armor and this is obtained from the fight cauldron minigame. And this gives you a damage reduction of 45%. If you were to wear the full obsidian armor, it will give you a damage reduction of 55%, but that includes using the shield, and as you should know, shields aren't really in a good position now in RS, so you really shouldn't be wearing that, you should either be wearing a two-handed weapon, or a one-handed weapon, and an offhand weapon. And in total, for this obsidian armor, there are five pieces that you should wear. The first is the helmet, and there are three different types of helmets, there's the range one, the melee one, and the magic one. You should just get whichever style that you're going to be using in the fight kiln. So for example, if you're going to be using range in the fight kiln, just get the range helmet for obsidian armor. But anyway, then you have the plate body, the plate legs, the gloves and the boots. Those are the five pieces that you need. And in order to make those five pieces, you have to collect these shards from the fight cauldron minigame. And you need 144 shards for the whole set. If you are a low level, I would highly recommend getting this obsidian armor as it will help you greatly. You should really have no trouble when you go into the fight kiln if you do have this obsidian armor. And even if you're a high level, I would recommend getting this as well, because then you really do not have to worry about any damage that you take. Also, there are a couple of requirements if you want to obtain this obsidian armor. The first thing that you need to do is complete the Brink of Extinction quest, and this will allow you to play the Fight Cauldron minigame. And then after you have all the shards, you're going to need 85 smithing to put all this armor together. If you don't have 85 smithing, then you can try and get someone to assist you for those levels. And then once you've done that, in order to wear it, you just need 60 defense. The second very useful item is this Tockel Zo, and you get this as a reward after you complete the Elder Kiln quest, and what this does is it boosts damage against volcanic creatures by 10%, so just basically any monster that is in the fight kiln. So if you have this already, I'd highly recommend wearing it. It isn't as essential as the obsidian armor, but like I said, if you do have it, just make sure you wear it because it will give you a little bit of a damage boost. Alright, now that we're done with that, it's time to move on to what gear that you should be wearing. However, like I mentioned before, you can wear the obsidian armor instead of any of these armors that I'm going to mention now, and then you can just use any of the weapons that I mentioned with that obsidian armor. But if you don't want to wear obsidian armor and you think you can do it without it, then just listen to the armor that I mentioned from here on out. So as you can see here, I've kind of color coded this, so the green items are more useful and the red items are less useful. So starting off with the best armor, and that is Malevolent, then Anima Core of Zaros, Tetsu, Torva, Bandos, and Barrows. The absolute lowest armor that I'd actually recommend is Barrows. If you can't use Barrows for any particular reason, then go ahead and get yourself some Obsidian armor. As for the weapons, obviously Zaros God Sword is going to be number one, Noxious Scythe, Drygores, Dragon Rider Lance, the Blade of Avaris and Nymora, and some Chaotix. You can go far down enough to the point that you get to a whip, but I really wouldn't recommend using a whip. The minimum that I'd recommend is some tier 80 weapon, so that is why I recommended the Chaotix as the very minimum, because otherwise you're just going to be doing it insanely slow, and you'll also be taking quite a bit of damage as well. For magic, the best armor is Tectonic, then moving down we have the Anima Core of Seren, Sea Singers, Virtus, Subjugation, and Ganodermic. Ganodermic is actually pretty good because it will soak up a lot of the damage, so even though that is at the bottom, it is actually a pretty good viable option for you. So if you can't afford any of the ones above Ganodermic, don't worry because Ganodermic isn't actually that bad, and as I said, it will soak up some of the damage for you. As for the weapons, Staff of Slisk is obviously the best, then Noxious Staff, Seismix, Avertus One and Book, Chaotic Staff, and then at the very bottom we have the Armadil Battle Staff. And finally for ranged, the best armor is Serenic, then Anima Core of Zamorak, Death Lotus, Pernix, Armadil, and Royal Dehyde. As for the weapons, the best weapon is the Seren God Bow, then the Noxious Bow, Ascensions, the Royal Crossbow, Chaotix, and Armadil Crossbows. Once again, not really much to say about those weapons. A Royal Crossbow is very easy to come by, and you can get one for quite cheap, so you should have no reason to not have a decent weapon. And also, there are a few hybrid armors that you can use if you plan on using two different weapon styles. The first one is obviously Obsidian, then the Anima Core of Slisk is a good alternative, War Priest, and also Dragon Rider. And then with this armor, you can just use any of the weapons that I previously mentioned. Moving on to the inventory for low and high levels. As you can see from the pictures, these are the bare minimum inventories that I recommend taking. You have to bring along a pickaxe or have one in your tool belt, and the pickaxe has to be at least rune. And obviously you need the requirements to use it. I will show you why you need this pickaxe later on in the video. But anyway, apart from what I have in the inventory shown, you can also bring along a ring of vigor, some sourdoman brews, a unicorn or bunyip pouch after your beast of burden has run out, 
and those pouches will be able to sustain you for even more healing. Also if you're using a unicorn don't forget to bring your healing aura scrolls as you need them in order for your unicorn to heal you. You can also bring along an extra beast of burden pouch. I recommend using either a war tortoise or a pakyak and you just want to fill them up with whatever food that you're using. But apart from that you can also bring some adrenaline potions, a mage switch if you wish because a lot of monsters in the fight kiln are weak to water spells so just make sure that if you're using magic to also only use water spells and you can also bring an enhanced Excalibur as well. Also if you have any useful items that you think will be useful for you in the fight kiln, feel free to bring them along as well. Just for clarification, if you don't know what those two potions are in the top left of the inventories, in the low inventory you have the Super War Masters potion, and this is just pretty much a shitty overload, and this is pretty much just an overload for low level players that can't make overloads yet, and in the top left of the high inventory you have Supreme Overload potions. But if you don't have Supreme Overload potions, you can just bring along whatever overload potions that you want. So now that you know what to wear and what to bring to the fight kiln, let's take a look at some of the monsters that you are going to be fighting in there. Now I'm not even going to bother trying to say the name because the names are just kind of ridiculous. So if you want to know the names of these minions, they'll be at the top. This first one has a combat level of 100. It has 4000 life points and there are 20 of them in the fight kiln. And the combat style that it uses is melee. This one has a combat level of 140. It has 7000 life points. There are 8 of them in the fight kiln and it uses ranged. This one has a combat level of 200, it has 7500 life points, there are 46 of them, and this one uses ranged and melee if you are in melee distance. So if you are using range or mage, just make sure that you are out of melee distance. This one has a combat level of 160, it has 6000 life points, there are 27 of them, and it uses magic or melee once again if you are in melee distance. This one is a very annoying one and you'll get to see why later on in the video. It has a combat level of 120, it has 6000 life points, there are 8 of them in the fight kiln, and the combat style that it uses is magic. This has a combat level of 400, it has 15000 life points, there are 23 of them, and it uses either magic or melee if you are in melee distance. This one has a combat level of 300, it has 9000 life points, there are 30 of them and it uses melee. This one is a combat level of 180, it has 8000 life points, there are 5 of them and it uses melee. And now we're moving on to the last two, this is Jad and he has a combat level of 780 in this. He has 40,000 life points and you have to kill 7 of them, and he uses all 3 combat styles. He only uses mage and range if you're not in melee distance of him, so just make sure that you have a weapon that you can attack him with from a distance, and then he won't use melee. And then finally this is the boss of the fight kiln, he has a combat level of 800 and he has 150,000 life points, there's only one of them for you to kill and he uses all 3 combat styles. Finally there's one more thing that you need to know about before we head inside. At the end of the odd waves these crystals will spawn and you can just use these to help you advance through the fight kiln. Let's just take a look at what these crystals do. First of all we have the invulnerability crystal and this makes you invulnerable for 15 seconds. And these spawn at the end of waves 1, 13 and 25. Next up is this restoration crystal and this fully restores your prayer points and life points and this will spawn at the end of waves 3, 15 and 27. The magic crystal boosts your magic by 50% but all your other combat styles will be reduced. So if you have 99 magic your magic will get boosted up to like 149 but all your other combat stats will get reduced to 49. This includes your defense so I wouldn't really recommend using this unless you are a high level and if you think you can just soul split back up whatever extra damage that you're going to be taking but if you're a low level I wouldn't recommend using these but these spawn at the end of waves 5, 17 and 29. Also exactly like the magic crystal you have the ranged crystal and this also does the exact same except for ranged and this spawns at the end of waves 7, 19 and 31 and once again we have the strength crystal and this boosts your strength by 50% and it reduces the combat stats just like the others and this spawns at the end of waves 9, 21 and 33. This is the constitution crystal and this boosts your constitution by 50% and then once it wears off it will fully heal you. And these will spawn at the end of waves 11, 23 and 35. Alright so it's finally time to actually enter the fight kiln. When I was getting these clips I was just doing this with the absolute bare minimum that I could. Just take a look at my inventory, I only have 3 prayer renewals, some super restores, I got my pickaxe in there and I also have just rock tail as well. So I did this without any stat boosting potions, just to test out how hard it actually is to do it with this setup. So once you get into the fight kiln you want to run to the south and just run behind this little L shaped rock. Just stand in the little corner of it where the L connects like I'm showing you now. And then just wait for the monsters to come to you, do not run out and go to them. Just wait for them to start attacking you first and then you can begin to attack them. 
You want to do this from waves 1 to 5 and remember to pick up the crystals as you go along. On wave 5 you just want to kill these monsters as you normally would and then once you've killed all the main ones this dill will spawn in the northwest. You want to save this for last as this one is the annoying one that I mentioned before. You want to turn off all your prayers and then start hitting it with your pickaxe. If you are not using melee, switch to one of your melee ability bars when you have your pickaxe out. And why you need the pickaxe is because this dill has armor that you need to crack through and the only way to do that is with a pickaxe. So if you have melee abilities this will just make it faster. Once you've cracked its shell then you can switch back to your normal weapon and then begin hitting it normally. Also you want to make sure that you're not praying whilst you're hitting this because these dills have a special attack that is unavoidable and it will hit you for like 1.7k damage so it's quite annoying. And if you have prayers on it seems to do the special attack a lot more frequently. So yeah just make sure that you don't have any prayers on and then you should be ready to go. From wave 6 to 9 you just want to be doing whatever you were doing at the beginning. Just stand behind this L-shaped rock and then just fight them as they come. And then once you hit wave 10, wave 10 is a big one because Jad spawns on this wave along with a ranger. So just do the same as you were doing before, stand behind that L-shaped rock, kill the ranger first and then move on to Jad. If you don't remember which of Jad's attack is which, this is his mage one which he just like leans back. And then for his range one he just stomps on the ground and that's pretty much it. If you're not good with prayer switching I would highly suggest putting the prayers on your action bar so it's easier for you to do. That's what I do and it helps me out quite a bit because then I can do other stuff with my mouse. So yeah, if you're worried for any reason that you might mess up, just put your prayers on your action bar. The rest of the waves up to wave 19 are pretty straightforward. Pretty much all you have to do is the same as before, just stand by that little L-shaped rock at the beginning of the round and then just wait for them to come to you and then once they get to you just attack them. But on wave 19 another dill will spawn, so just deal with that as you did before. And then finally on wave 20 another jad will spawn. It will spawn in the same area that you did last time. So just deal with the other minion that spawns with him first and then move on to Jad. And then once you get to wave 21 things start to get a little bit more difficult because that little L shaped rock has disappeared. So from now on at the beginning of these rounds you're going to be standing at the northeast side of this middle rock. For wave 21 loads of these little melee guys will spawn so just stick on protect from melee. Keep standing by this middle rock and wait for all of them to spawn. Then once they've all spawned run to the northeast side of the arena. Wait for all of them to come to you for a little bit and then run down behind this eastern rock. I didn't do it properly in this clip because I'm a bellend, but if you do actually do it right then they'll all get stuck behind that eastern rock and then you can just safe spot them from there. So yeah, just kill them all and then stand at the northeast side of the middle rock once you have done it. On wave 22, once again a lot of melee guys will spawn. Once they have all spawned, run to the northeast behind this rock here and then just wait for them to come to you. This is a safe spot so they won't be able to attack you. Kill the small guys first because they will actually be able to attack you if you don't kill them first and then just proceed to finish off the bigger guys. And then do exactly the same as you just did for wave 23 and 24. At the start of wave 25 you want to be standing on the northeast side of this middle rock. But this time you don't want to move from that middle rock, you just want to stay there. Wait for all the southern monsters to come to you. Once they've arrived behind the rock, just kill these ranged guys first. And then once you've killed them, just go one step east from where you were standing before. And then protect from mage and kill the mage behind the melee guys. Because in this spot the melee guys won't be able to hit you, but you'll still be able to hit the mage. And then once the mage is killed, just finish off the melee guys. And then for wave 26 and 27, you should do exactly the same. Now wave 28 is by far the wave that I hate the most. This is because 6 dills will spawn. So at the beginning of the wave, make sure you are standing at the very northernmost part of the arena. And then the first thing that you want to do is kill the mage that spawns. And then once you've killed the mage, run behind the rock at the most northern side of the arena. And then all you have to do is kill the dills one by one. Remember to turn your prayers off because they'll activate their special attack more. And also for this wave if you aggro more than one just try and lure them behind the middle rock. And then a few of them will actually get stuck there. And then you can just deal with them one by one that way. And then once you've killed them all just stand at the northeast side of the middle rock again. And then on wave 29 a bunch of big melias will spawn. So just lure them behind that rock to the north. And then you should be able to safe spot them from there. For wave 30 make sure you're standing at the northeast side of the middle rock again. Make sure that you don't move from that spot and just kill the melias that come towards you. Once you've killed the two melias that are attacking you then you can go ahead and attack Jad. And then once you've killed Jad you can just finish off the other melee guy. On wave 31 a bunch of rangers will spawn. Just make sure you're standing on the northeast side again and kill the rangers to the north first. And then you can kill the ones to the south. On the start of wave 32 you want to be standing on the south side of the middle rock. And then once that first one hits you, you want to run to the very east and stand behind that rock to the east. And then from there you should easily be able to safe spot them unless you're obviously using melee. At the start of wave 33, once again you want to be standing at the northeastern side of this middle rock. And during this wave, four big mages will attack you. 
Once again, just kill the ones to the north first and then finish off the ones to the south. On wave 34, make sure you're standing on the northeastern side again. Kill the Melia that comes up to attack you first and then kill Jad. And then just finish off the other minion that's there. As you hit wave 35, you want to be standing on the western side of the rock like this. And then from here, you can either do one of two things. Either kill the Melia first that's attacking you, or you can just go ahead and straight fight Jad. I'd recommend killing the Melia first if you don't have that much experience with this. But I mean, it's just up to you, do whatever you want. As you go to fight Jad, the mage at the south side should get stuck on the middle rock, so you won't be getting attacked from that. So yeah, just finish off Jad, and then just finish off the other minions as you would. And finally, on the last of the normal waves, at the beginning of wave 36, you want to be standing on the northeastern side of this middle rock. Two Jads will spawn to the south. Just take one step east to deal with the first Jad, and then just go on to the other side to deal with the second Jad. Once you've killed both of them, there's only one wave left, and that is the final boss. Now, the final boss isn't even that hard. It's just annoying and takes quite a while because you can only damage him while his head is out of the lava. His head will emerge every 27 seconds from either the west, south or east side. He will never spawn on the north side. And then after 27 seconds he will go into the lava for 45 seconds and then come up again. During that 45 second downtime you want to kill as many of these tentacles that you can. These tentacles will either attack with magic or ranged. And you just want to be praying whatever the majority of tentacle that there is. So if there's one mage tentacle around and three ranged ones, then you obviously want to be praying range. However, if you are a low level and you don't want to be tanking as many of these tentacles as you can, then just stand in the corner of the arena where there are the least amount of tentacles, and then this should save you some HP. Once the head spawns again, you want to activate an ultimate ability so that you can do as much damage to it as you can, and then that will make the fight a lot faster. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There isn't that much to say about the final fight. It's pretty straightforward and you'll get used to it like really quickly. So yeah, once you've defeated that final boss, you'll be given a choice. You'll either be given a Fight Kiln Cape for the combat style that you used most in the Fight Kiln, or you can choose to get an Uncaught Onyx instead. But if you're watching this guide, I'm guessing you're doing it for the cape, so go ahead and enjoy your new cape. Also, if you do die at any point during the Fight Kiln, don't worry. I'm sure it's happened to the best of us. Just learn from whatever mistake that you made the first time and then try again. But anyway, that is it. I know this is a very long video, but I wanted to be as thorough as I could. I know this video was highly requested by a lot of you, so I hope you're happy with what you watched. If you have any more recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. And that is it from me. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And peace.